yes. Good morning all, so good to see you. In your hands, yes. Yes, <laughs> I'll send you this one as well. Thank you. One more time, I give myself. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to do, right. Thank you, Lord. We come before you today. And we thank you for all those online and those that are not, but might hear this later. I pray that we give ourselves to you. Take our heart, Lord. Take our mind, take our spirit. Take us, Lord, to the place that we need to be. Lord, help us to be co-creators with you in all that we do and give ourselves fully to you in Jesus name so good to see you all so good to see you I know it's been a while right <laughs> well it's really good to see you can I just say a big happy birthday to Mercy a big congratulations to Priscilla a big sorry to hear about the the, the things that are going on with the illnesses and then I also want to thank you um, from my bottom of my heart, of all the gifts, all the, the phone calls, all the messages um, towards um, what has happened with uh, my family and um, we say thank you to you today. Right, so let's get into the word. So today we are going to continue the Psalms of Reorientation. It's the last one before you hear about the other side of things. Now, we have learned so far about walking with God. We've learned about um, the God's intention for our lives. We have learned about meditation as well. That happened last week. This week, I want to home in on something that we all seem to know about. But do we? When we look at this in another context, I want us to think about worship and creation and how that mixes itself together. What? How does worship weave into our own lives and take on the character of God. That's quite a big one, right? So I want to ask you this question. What are you giving life to today? What do you give life to? Because whatever you give life to is what you become. Whatever you give life to is what you're creating. And the Psalms that we're going to look at is going to take us there. Now, if you've got skills that you want to develop, if you give life to it, you're going to give life to God's skills within you. If you have love in your heart, you're going to give life to it and you're going to take on the character of God in love in your heart. So think about this today. But before I read the scripture, I want to read um, Walter Brogman's book, The Spirit spirituality of the psalms and it's a powerful quote in my view which says faith is a canopy a covering we live our lives out on public worship let me say that again faith is a canopy we live our lives out on public worship world making it's where the psalms becomes a means whereby the creator is creating the world that sounds so grand, doesn't it? The creative word is spoken in the Psalms. What are you calling into existence in your own lives? In other words, what are you creating? What are you giving life to? So today I'm going to give you some tips on what you should give your life, what you should give life to, according to the text and according to Psalms. One, four, five. It's the Psalms of David, a, a Psalms of David where he expresses his love for God. The first thing I want to tell you 
is that you need to create a heart of worship. Oh, it's so obvious. And this is found in verse 1 of Psalms 145. It says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. It's a staple diet, everybody. It's a staple diet. It's something that you need for your life. Whether it's lockdown, out of lockdown, during lockdown, you still need that staple diet of worship. I want you to know that. No, it's not just for the singers. No, it's not just for the worship leaders. No, it's not just for the leaders. It is for you too. It is essential that you exalt God above every other thing in your life. So when David says, my God, it became personal. He acknowledged the personal nature of God in his life. And then when David says, the king, remember, King David was King David. He was ruling everybody, but he acknowledged that he was serving the king of kings. One that was greater, had the greater life source for himself, above himself. God was supreme in his life. David was willing to give the source of worship over to God. And he was willing to put God above everything else. And yes, I know David had his faults. We all know about that. But yet he had a heart of worship. So I want to ask you this question again. If you have taken away worship in your life, then what have you replaced it with? Let me say that again. If you have taken away worship in your life, then what have you replaced it with? Who have you got in God's place this morning? Yeah, it's one of those ones. It's one of those ones for you to think about. So we just sang, I give myself away so that he, thank you, Linda, can use me. Do we mean that? Do we mean that? How much of our lives are we giving away to him? So think about that today. Have a heart of worship. The second thing I want you to do is remember that worship is a regular occurrence. Yes, it's a regular occurrence. Worship needs to be every day. Living, everything we do, it must pertain to worship. So the scripture says in verse 2, Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Yeah. Did you know that this Psalms was repeated twice in the morning and once in the evening on a regular basis? So it was entrenched in their heart how much we should love and how much we should worship God. It's a reminder to us that we ought to surrender on a regular basis. And that leads me into the third thing that we need to do when we're giving ourselves away and when we're being becoming creators with God, co-creators with God, and when we start to, to give it all up for him, we need to surrender. Oh yes, I said the word, surrender. It's a regular surrender. It's not about words. Yes, you can say words all the days of your life, but it's about character. It's about becoming co-creators with God to help others. Let me say that again. It's not about words, but it's about character. It's about us becoming co-creators with God by taking on the characters of God and using it for God's glory to help others. So as you surrender your life to God, you should surrender your life to your community. We are called to serve. It's not just about us. As we surrender our lives, we are called to be co-creators with God, to give life back into something, to gener generate the heart of service. And that happens by complete surrender. Now I'm going to ask you, are you able to surrender your money when somebody else needs it? Oh, that's all I'm saying about money, all right? Are you able to surrender when someone needs you? Or are you missing in action? I can confess, I've been like that sometimes when you're caught up with something else and somebody needs you and you're not there. That's part of worship. When God does not get the worship he deserves, then it's somebody else that's getting it. Oh, who's taking its place this morning? 
The car, has that taken the place of worship? The land, has that taken the place of worship? The children, has that taken the place of worship? The travel, the sex drive, the healthy relationship, the unhealthy relationship, has that taken the place of worship? I have news for you. That if you're already worshipping something else, then God is not at the forefront of your life. Oh my goodness, I did not plan to be so straight today. But as I look at the text, and as we're talking about reorientation with God, and being taken on the creation of God, a co-creation of God, and taking on the character of God, we have to take on how we worship God, and how it's woven into our lives. I want to ask you, where do you take your guidance from? God deserves, he deserves to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. Give ourselves away totally. And I want to encourage you, I want you to encourage you to recommit if you're not doing that. Recommit to where you used to be. We've been through a lot this year and last year. But I want to encourage you to recommit and have reorientation in this Psalms as it teaches us. The fourth thing I want you to do and remember is what the text says in verse four, and that is pass it on. Say pass it on to the next generation. Verse four says generation after generation stands in awe of your work. Each one tells the story of your mighty acts. The psalmist celebrates the young. He celebrates the old. He reminds us that we need to celebrate in worship and tell the next generation. And it says here in this verse, your marvellous doings are headline news. What has God done for you? Who are you passing it on to? Who are you sharing that with? That is, it should be woven into your heart of worship. It should be woven into your life of worship. You know, I remember last year sometime, my mother-in-law, um, thank God she's alive and well. Um, she um, called us together at bir during her birthday and she sat with us and she told us her life. Honestly, it was like we could, could have got the popcorn. It was so juicy, such juicy information. But it really was about what God had done for her and how she overcame and how she, she broke through and how she became stronger. And that was inspiration to us as younger ones, you know? And we ought to also do that. I remember my mum just sitting on the bed and talking about her life and giving God praise about what he had done for her life. What are we doing you know, for our kids, for, our, for the people we meet, for the young people we meet, for the middle-aged people we meet? What are we doing? How are we weaving God's worship in our lives to let them see what God has done for you. I want you to say, tell them, tell them, tell them about God's majesty. Tell them about God's wisdom. Tell them about God's creation for your life. Tell them about God's works in your life. Tell them about God's salvation, how he brought me out. Tell them about when I'm weak, he makes me strong. Tell them about when I am poor, he makes me rich. Tell them about when I am weak, he makes me strong. Tell them about when I'm weak, even in my weakness, there is strength because of the power of worship in my life, making it a regular occurrence, making it a blessing to be a part of God being woven into my life and taken on as co-creations of our lives. Oh my goodness. And the final one I want to share with you is take on goodness and compassion in your lives. That, that's what God wants us to be, to take on goodness, the goodness of God and the compassion of God in our lives. Verse 8, verse 9 said, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Woo! slow to anger oh help me lord let me say that again the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love hey how are you taking that on are you taking that on today are you taking that on? the lord is good to all he has compassion on all he has made we are reminded in this text we are reminded to call into existence compassion and goodness, we are reminded to call into, in, into existence compassion and goodness for those that hate us. 
oh my god did i just say that for those that we don't get on with oh my god for those for those that are getting on our last nerves oh my god compassion oh and goodness when it's hard out there when the, when the people don't know what they're talking about and you've got to put up with it we've got to take on the character of god grace in the text is like tenderness and mercy, it represents the mother's womb, like a mother. God is, God is, God is not only a he, but she. It could be anything. She, he could be anything. God is omnipotent. He is powerful. He's, he's mighty. He's, he takes on the spirit of the mother's womb, where he takes tenderness and care with you. We all need tenderness and care right now. We need tenderness and care. The scripture says, "The Lord upholds all who fall and lift up." all who bow down so there's hope there's hope for us all to have compassion with one another there's hope for us all that you know that god has compassion on you when you messed up are you stressed god has compassion are you troubled god has compassion have you got low abilities right now lack of confidence lack of self-esteem self-esteem god has compassion oh my goodness and we are called to take on and call into existence and become co-creators with god in this text and then remain faithful in our worship weave it weave it in weave it in weave in some love weave in some faithfulness weave in some compassion weave in some care oh because god as we take on the spirit of God, if we take on the co-creation of God, we become like the character of God. And then people will know and come to know the greatness of God in our lives. So I want to conclude today. I want to conclude and remind you that David has invited us to worship with him and let that be woven together. In, I want to encourage you today, if you feel like you're not committed right now, you feel like you're lacking in commitment. I want to encourage you to recommit today. Recommit. Yeah, I messed up. But recommit. Recommit in worship. Start to be a regular occurrence. Start it to be a surrender to my heart. And then take back on the, co the character of God in our lives. Goodness. Compassion. Love. Worship. And tell the next generation. God bless you today and God keep you today. Amen.